Welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So in today's video, we're gonna discuss how to have a successful equine business. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what I've done in order to have a successful equestrian business and a little bit about what you can do in order to establish that. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the steps that you can take in order to establish a business, what you need to do, and some things that you need to think about. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you wanna think about is what kind of equestrian business are you gonna have? Are you gonna be a rescue? Are you gonna have a lesson program? Are you gonna do boarding? Are you gonna do training? There's so many different things that you can do in the equine business and that you can be successful at. But what you need to think about after you decide what you're going to do, you need to think about what kind of company you're gonna have. What I mean by that is, are you gonna have an LLC? Are you gonna be a sole proprietorship? Are you gonna have an S corporation? Are you gonna have a C corporation? There are different ones that you can choose from. And it really is just gonna depend on what your business is and how you wanna protect yourself and what's gonna be the best fit. I personally am an LLC, which is a limited liability company. This is a really great option because first off, it separates your personal and your business assets. So that's definitely beneficial when it comes to the equestrian business. Another thing that's really great about the LLC is it gives you that liability. I think this is the most popular choice when it comes to equestrian businesses, but again, it's really just gonna depend on what works for you. With the LLC, you can have multiple members, and it's really awesome because when it comes to filing and taxes, it is pretty straightforward for the most part. It's definitely worth the risk when it comes to looking at the other options that would blend some of your assets. So I think you really just wanna study those and kind of get a good idea on what's gonna work for your equestrian business. So let's talk a little bit more about what kind of business you're gonna have. So again, I have a lesson program. I have about 30 to 50 students, and then I also offer some leasing as well. I have a few training horses sometimes, so that's another really great way to establish a business, to have a few different things going for you so that all your hands aren't in the same pot. Separate from my LLC, I'm also a saddle fitter on the side, so I went to saddle fitting school for six months in South Carolina, so I am certified. And then, as you know, I find a lot of horses in need, work with them for one to five years, and then I place them in their perfect home. So I do get a little amount from sales with horses as well. So that is another thing that is a part of my successful equestrian business. But now you're gonna have to decide what's gonna work for you. So there are definitely learning curves when it comes to the equestrian industry and kind of figuring out what you enjoy and what you're passionate about. I think the number one thing is you have to have the passion. If you don't have the passion with what you're doing, then it's most likely not gonna be successful when it comes to the equestrian business and the industry. You have to make sure that what you're doing makes financial sense. Time and money are both very valuable, but when it comes down to it, you have to love what you're doing in order for it to be successful. Passion drives success. So a little bit about my story. I got my property about three and a half years ago. My barn has 12 stalls, two tack rooms, an indoor arena, outdoor arena, and we're just on about 10 acres. So it's a nice small facility and it was affordable for my husband and I, and of course we live on site. So what's gonna be a huge part when it comes to figuring out your equestrian business is are you gonna buy or are you going to rent? If it's something like a lesson barn, training, anything like that, you're definitely gonna have to have the facility or the property or rent one. If it's something like saddle fitting, then again, you don't really have to have the facility and you can travel to people. Another thing a lot of people do is there are such thing as traveling trainers. So if you can't afford a property, another idea is that you could travel to people and work with them and do clinics and that kind of thing. Um, there's so many things that you can do. And once you decide, you have to figure out and look what makes the most sense. Does it make more sense to rent? Cause it's more affordable at the time. Maybe you just can't put a deposit down on what you're gonna be purchasing right now. So you rent instead, or if you do, at least you're gonna be investing in that property if you do purchase it. So I think it's just weighing those options and kind of figuring out how it's gonna go. Um, so yeah, we got the property, like I said, three and a half years ago. And about a couple months in, I decided to bring in some boarders. So personally, I decided that boarding did not work out for me. It was way too much of a physical time demand and you did not make a lot of money just because of the overhead costs and all the labor and the maintenance that was required. It's definitely something that was not beneficial for me from a business standpoint, a passion standpoint, or a time standpoint. So that is something I decided to discontinue and it was a good business decision on my end. Now, I do think that if you have boarders that are students or you have training horses in, if you have horses at your property that aren't yours, but they're doing other things like clinics, like I said, lessons, training, that kind of stuff, then I think it can be beneficial. 
you know, you really just have to decide what is gonna work for you. There is some trial and error, but that's why I'm making this video to try to just guide you a little bit on how I was able to be successful. Once you figure that out, then you're just gonna have to grow with that program. Once you find something that works for you, you're gonna have to put in the time. So I decided that lessons were really awesome and that I was really passionate about it and it's something I wanted to continue developing in my lesson, in my lesson program. So I started with just two students and then it just kept growing over time. And by 2020, I was up to 50. And it was something that was super awesome and it took time to develop. So I had to make sure that I had the horses, like safe lesson horses. And when we got the property, I only had two. I had Jiminy and I had an Arabian name Abu and those are my only horses. So taking the time to find those horses and develop them by the time the program took off you know, it took a lot of investment, it took a lot of time. Businesses take time to build up. Three years minimum, any business. Like it's just gonna take time to develop. And then you gotta kinda like manipulate and change things as you go. Like with my program, I have completely revamped it several times now because things change when you have a different, a number of people, different kind of horses, like different kind of disciplines or whatever you're deciding to do, even the different seasons, things have to change sometimes. So a lot of business stuff is just kind of preparing yourself, doing the best you can, but then also just kind of rolling with the punches and being aware of like what needs to change during certain periods of the business's development. So really, really keep that in mind as well. Huge thing that we wanna talk about is insurance. You gotta have insurance on whatever you're doing. So of course I have the limited liability company, so that does help me a little bit. However, you wanna have insurance as well. So I have commercial equine liability insurance. I have farm insurance as well, and that is through an equestrian farm company. Now, again, you'll have to be doing that research to figure out what's gonna be best for you. But to me, insurance is a must have. And you can get different kinds of insurance that covers your buildings. Some of it can cover your tack that's inside, your hay, your tractors. That's something you'll have to discuss with your insurance agent, but that is a must have and a serious business thing when it comes down to it. The other thing, speaking in business terms, is you're gonna have to have a farm account, a business account. You're gonna wanna make sure to keep everything you do with your business separate in a different account whenever people pay you, whenever you make purchases that are for the business, that kind of thing in a separate account. And that is very important to protect your assets and to also make sure that you're keeping track of things. So definitely something that you wanna consider um, and do when it comes to having an equestrian business. Again, a little bit more about my story. Everyone asks, how do you have these 10 horses? How do you, how do, you do all this? Well, I'm just gonna kind of break it down again for you. So again, we purchased the property three and a half years ago. My husband is an engineer, so his income really definitely helps with like the main things that we need. But when it comes down to the horses and paying for them, that is solely on me and what I make. It took time to build. Like I didn't just go buy 10 horses and spend tens of thousands of dollars. Like I worked really, really hard to get these horses, work with them and get them to be compatible safe equine. Some of them did not come to me that way. A lot of them did not come to me that way. Some of them had never even been ridden, like seriously. So having that specific skill set really, really helped me to be able to get horses for a little bit of a lower price because I had the skill set to be able to put the training into them to make them safe, great, awesome riding equines and lesson horses. The other thing that you wanna think of, how much help are you gonna need? I personally am a one-man show, so I do have um, hired instructors that do help with lessons occasionally, but for the most part, I'm doing all the feeding, I'm doing the stalls, I'm doing all of the care. My husband will help me with like the maintenance and he does help me like move hay and do things like that sometimes. When it comes down to it, I'm doing everything and that does save money, but it can also you know, take a little bit of time away from other areas. So you're just gonna have to decide how large of a scale are you gonna be on and are you gonna need help? And you're gonna have to factor that in when it comes to the financial aspect of your equestrian business. So it really helps me because I'm small enough that I can basically manage it myself for the most part, but I'm big enough to where it's still making me an income and a profit. So you really wanna think about that and capitalize on what you have. Um, some other things, again, the lessons, the leasing. I do a lot of events like trail riding. I have a fun show. I take my students to shows. So we also do these highlight events that bring in income as well. And that's very helpful and beneficial. And again, it's something I love and I'm passionate about. And I wanna be able to share that with my students, which is a huge part of my program. And that also attracts people because it's something unique and different. We're not just one discipline, we're multi. So I think that gives people a little bit more of like, wow, okay, that's a little different, that's unique. And I would like to get my child involved 
in that because it's not just strictly one thing, which again, nothing wrong with that. I think there's so many benefits to being um, one disciplined barn. If not, that's amazing. You can go higher level. And if somebody really wants that, then that's what they need to go towards. But I'm just kind of explaining again, like what I do. The other thing is just selling horses here and there, like when their time is right, because I don't want anyone just staying here to be a lesson horse because it is taxing on them mentally. And again, they're all my personal horses. So when I feel like I've done them justice and they're ready or the right person comes along, then I will set them free to their correct home. Yeah, so that's really what it comes down to. And now again, I'm capitalizing and making money off talking to you guys, you know, with YouTube and TikTok. It's just another thing that I can add onto my business that is gonna benefit the business, me, and I'm passionate about, and it's gonna benefit you, at least I hope it does. I am so passionate about this now, like this is huge. I think if you wanna be successful in a business, you have to immerse yourself into it. That has to be the end all be all. Like my whole lifestyle is horses. This isn't just, oh, I walk out and ride my horses all day and like this is just fun. No, I am hardcore in this. Like it's my entire life. I live, sleep, eat, breathe horses from a lifestyle standpoint, a business standpoint, a passion standpoint, everything. So I think I just have the perfect little storm that allowed me to be successful and things just unfolded the right way. And if I noticed something wasn't working, I corrected it or I thought of a different idea or I developed as I was going through this process. So I think that's just something you have to do is be flexible about what's happening and kind of roll with the punches and be open to changing if something's not working. <laughs> Another thing I wanna bring up is don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't make money with horses and that you can't be successful in the equine industry because that is absolutely false and you absolutely can. You just have to go about it in an intelligent, thoughtful, passionate way. If you do that, and if you take the right steps, you can do this. I was not given handouts. Nobody helped us with our down payment. I saved, my husband saved, we worked our butts off to get a big deposit to put down on our farm. None of us came from money. So there is absolutely no excuse. I've wanted this for years, for a decade, for a decade. And I got the farm when I was 26, I'm 30 now. So, you know, I got my farm relatively young, but I really had set goals. And I worked really hard to make that happen. And I know you can too. But yeah, when you're first starting out, it is really easy to get discouraged just for multiple things. Sometimes people can be difficult in the industry or any industry. So, you know, there's always gonna be stressful times. And all I'm saying is you just have to think through it logically and try your best to just push through and know that there's always gonna be things that come up. And there's things that are gonna be successful and fail within the business as well. And that's okay. Things aren't gonna go perfect at first. They're hard. It's blood, sweat, and tears. Like there's a lot that goes into being in the equine industry. So you just have to keep that in mind. And when you're feeling down on yourself, just know that you will get through this by either making a change or just kind of going through a process and everything will work out. You definitely wanna have your contracts in place. You wanna have uh, liability release. Um, if you have leasers, you wanna have lease agreements acknowledgement forms of any of your policies and that you have equestrian liability signs posted. So you wanna think about all of that too when it comes down to your equestrian business so that you're covered. And I highly recommend having a lawyer look over your forms to make sure that they're legally binding and to proofread them. Another thing, um, when it comes down to your taxes, you can hire an accountant or for financial advice or recommendations, that's also something to really take in consideration as well, especially if your business is growing. So again, my business started really small and now I have grown to make around six figures. So I'm just sharing that with you so that you understand that you really can be successful when it comes down to it and that I started super itty bitty tiny from nothing, ground zero. Like our deposit was our entire savings. So. I'm just saying that so you guys understand because just so many people just say, oh, I don't have any money, I can't do it. Well, neither did I, neither did we. It takes time, but if you're smart about it and you are driven, then you can do this. I work a lot, like you're not doing the nine to five, like you're not working, you know, just like 40 hours a week. I am constantly thinking about my business, my horses, like their wellness, like my program, like it's just, it's like an immersion of like my life and my business, like I said before. So 
just understand like I think that's part of how it's why it's worked for me is because I'm just so into it but I love it it's not daunting for me you know and and also I just want to say make sure you give yourself breaks because you don't want to get burnt out either um, I think it's really important to make sure that you do things that are important to you and that you do some self-care too um, yeah so that's really important as well Okay, so I really hope that this video was valuable to you and that it helps you and that it gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do to start a successful equestrian business. If you have any questions, you can drop a comment in the description below or you're welcome to reach out and email me. My email is in the description too. If you have any other requests on anything more specific that you would like to hear, go ahead, send me an email or drop me a comment below or you know, just anything. If, if you wanna vent or talk, I'm happy to help out, whatever you might need. I also want to say that I have opened an equestrian merchandise store, um, another part of my business. So that link is in the description. All of the purchases go right back into my horses. Some of them are rescues, auctions, project horses, and everything goes right back into them and my farm. So there's some really cute stuff. So if you want to check that out, it's in the link below. Buy something free spirit equestrian and represent. Okay, horse lovers, I'm going to get going. It was really great talking with you. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye.